yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. Unfortunately, you're the only one who can pull this off. I don't make the rules. I wish I did, but I don't. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Don't be a stranger. It's been so long since I've had any visitors. Come on down. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? How about you drop the knife and the two of us just talk? Look how reasonable she's being. We should just drop the blade and talk things out. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. But killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. <sighs> the blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clack. Thank you. Against your better judgment, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face. Unarmed. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. <sighs> Just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship.
She hesitates before answering. You can address me as your royal highness, or her majesty. Any honorific should do, really. Note the lack of detail. You can't trust her. Too long. Again, she offers no specifics. No matter how hard you try, you'll never get a straight answer out of her. Do you? Don't just tell her that. <laughs> Is that why they threw me down here? But I don't want to hurt anyone. I like the world, I think. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I've been down here a long time. Just how long has she been down here? If I'm supposed to be capable of ending the world, then how did I wind up here, chained to a wall? Have they told you why I'm allegedly so... dangerous? Sooner or later, you'll understand that I have your best interests at heart. Hopefully sooner. How sweet. Now be a pal and help me get out of here, would you? We can figure out how to deal with them after I'm free. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key. Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. Well, you do have that big, sharp knife. You could always cut me out of here. She speaks with almost complete nonchalance. If we were stuck down here for long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant about cutting our way out. Anything to finally be free. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. I'll repeat myself once again. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. You make your way back to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd simply slain her like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? The knife. Pick it up and cut me out of here. You won't like what happens if you do that. Against your better judgement, you place the blade against the princess's arm, just above the massive, unyielding chain. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and you make quick work of it. Before long, you're able to crack through bone, and she pulls the bleeding stub of her arm through the iron gauntlet. She didn't so much as utter a sound. Free from her bindings, the princess turns to face you, her fierce gaze meeting your eye. How is she so composed after losing an arm? It's like she isn't even bothered by it. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No. We won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I just can't let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me.
stop that. I thought this was a little too easy. Your body lunges forward to sink the blade into her back, but the princess swiftly moves out of the way before you can connect. Stop it. Stop resisting me. I am trying to get you out of here alive. The blade. Move. The. Blade. You're doing your best to help me, aren't you? I can see the conflict in your eyes. I'll make this quick. She steps forward and pries the blade from your rigid hands. Maybe I'll see you in another life. And then she slits your throat with an almost clinical ease. Her face remains unchanged as she watches you collapse to the ground, blood flowing from your butchered neck. This is the end, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. I hope it was worth it. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. Oh, don't you start grandstanding about morals. The fate of the world is at risk right now, and the life of a mere princess shouldn't stop you from saving us all. Don't forget what he did to us the last time around. I wouldn't trust a word out of his mouth. There's got to be a way out of here, for us and for the princess. We just have to keep trying. I'm inclined to agree. If he doesn't remember what happened last time, maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you two, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. And as far as trying to help her goes, need I remind you how catastrophically dangerous she is to the world at large? I told you about the stakes of this situation less than a minute ago. You have already committed to my completion. You cannot go further astray. Those are two very different questions, but fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. The absolute irony. Well, that's one way to put it, I guess. You really don't remember what happened last time, do you? You practically forced the princess to kill us. That doesn't sound like the sort of thing I'd do. Which is honestly all the more reason for you to not buy into whatever self-delusions the three of you are crafting. <sighs> but this is a thought experiment, so I suppose I'll continue to give you the benefit of the doubt. If I did practically force the princess to kill you, it was probably for a good reason. Did you try and free her? Did you say something really mean to me? Because if I really did what you said I did, you probably deserved it. I'm a professional, after all. Sure you are. Anyway, I believe your second question was, What's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. You forced the princess to kill us and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything, just like I told you she would? 
What a conveniently ambiguous group of things for her to ruin. For all we know, the princess left the cabin and never saw another soul. Oh, how I wish that were the case, but if the princess weren't a certain inevitable threat to the world, the four of us wouldn't be here. And yet, here we are. You're talking in circles. No, I'm talking in facts. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Yes, yes, don't believe a word she says. Just go in, take the knife, and do what you're supposed to. Did you just say wink out loud? No, I didn't. Wink. Just ignore this clown and focus on the princess. The interior of the cabin is less a cosy woodland retreat and more like a dungeon. A few pathetic wisps of starlight attempt to illuminate the cold, uninviting stone. The only furniture of note is an iron table. The blade is your implement. He de there isn't a mirror. There's a table. There's death. There isn't. I think you. We should treat everything in here like it matters. Exactly. Don't you care if we're being lied to? If I'm not lying to you, use your eyes. There is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? It's but there was a mirror a second ago, and now it's gone. If he doesn't want us to know about it, it must be important. We should keep our eyes peeled. Maybe it'll be back. Very different. Yes, but why? Did he change it? Or did it change all on its own? Maybe it's a different cabin entirely. Now isn't that a novel thought? Maybe you haven't actually been here before. I hope this means you'll finally drop your ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. Don't get distracted by minor details. You take the blade from the table. Good idea. Much better to be armed than to go in with blind hope alone. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an old stone staircase. A few sputtering torches attempt to vaguely illuminate your path, dancing across glimmering patches of slimy moss on the stone steps. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her voice, harsh but controlled, carries up the stairs. Is that a visitor I hear? Please, come downstairs. It's been a while since I've had company. Does she remember us? You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. She looks up at you, the heavy collar around her neck clanking loudly as she moves the chains binding both her wrists to the far wall, joining the metallic chorus as she adjusts her hands in her lap. So much for cutting her out of here. Do you hear yourself right now? Cutting her out of here never should have been on the table. Have you noticed the empty chain on the wall? Odd that in a place where everything seems to serve a distinct purpose, there would be something so obviously useless. That was there last time too, wasn't it? It was. What an interesting development. Why don't you have a seat? The two of us should chat before you bury that thing in my heart. You step towards the princess, but she stops you before you get too close, holding up one shackled hand. There is fine. I'd prefer we keep some distance until we've sorted this out. That's reasonable. We do have a weapon. Might as well put her at ease. You do as she asks and sit on the floor, still a good distance away from her. Thank you. Now, what are your intentions for me? Yes, 
your intentions. You have a knife. What are you going to do with it? Why are you here? There isn't a keyhole in these shackles, so I'm afraid my only way out is surgical removal. Is she forgetting about the shackle on her neck? Or does she think she'd survive a beheading? You're right. Maybe she's delusional, all the more reason not to trust her. Unless she really could survive. Though I suppose you could just be here to kill me. But I don't think that's in either of our best interests. No, <laughs> no. Like I trust you to come any closer with that knife. All you're going to do is hand it to me and watch me work. But she would have to cut her head off, right? She can't be suggesting that. She certainly seems confident. Maybe she knows something we don't. Or maybe you should consider the most likely scenario. She's bluffing so she can disarm you. Though if she isn't bluffing, Whatever she has planned might be for her benefit alone. There's no guarantee that what's good for her is good for us. So, what should we do? I don't know. I'm just spelling out our options, listing the pros and cons. Then let me help you. I'll start with the cons. If you're handing her your weapon, the cons are that she might use it to escape and end the entire world. And she might use it to kill you. That doesn't sound great. What about the pros? There are none. The pros are that we can't trust him, possibly even more than we can't trust her. And whatever she has planned could do something to mess with what he has planned. If you take a moment to imagine yourself in my position, I think you'll understand why letting you near me with that thing is untenable. So, be a good bird and hand it over. And if being nice isn't enough motivation, well, I'm not afraid to resort to violence. If you come near me with that thing, I will strangle you with these chains. She doesn't beat around the bush, does she? Yes, it's almost like she's a fundamentally bad person who wishes to inflict pain on others. Or it's another bluff. No hard feelings, of course. But you should be aware of my position. I guess what you said back in the woods really was true. As much as I would like to remain in denial, it's no use. This has complicated things. It's complicated things how, exactly? Ideally, this was supposed to be one and done. You go to the cabin, you heroically slay the princess, and in the process you save the entire world from being damned to oblivion. The situation right now, where you're getting a second shot at things, is a contingency. A contingency for what? For you failing, obviously. And you being here means that things are going to be a lot harder than they were. I really shouldn't say anything else, I'm just going to make it worse. Just... good luck. Now hold on, if you knew this could happen, why didn't you believe us back in the woods? Why lay out all those hypotheticals? We didn't have to talk in circles. I needed you to believe this was your first time here, even if that wasn't the truth. I hoped if I pushed back hard enough, I could cram this seeping mess back into the bottle. And maybe I wanted to be the first version of me that you met. I didn't want to be confronted by the alternative. That's pathetic. I never said I wasn't. I get it. It would be pretty upsetting, wouldn't it? To know that you might not be the first version of yourself. At least we can remember what happened before. Seems like we should count ourselves lucky for that. Exactly, he gets it. You're lucky. So don't waste that luck by messing it up again. Alright? Moving on. Why is it important for us to be ignorant? How is it ever helpful to be in the dark? The more I say, the more your mind will swim into dangerous waters. Even saying that is too much. Your success hinges on you having imperfect information. For the sake of the entire world, you need to accept that. I won't. Fine, but you won't get another word from me on the matter. Yeah, sure. 
We'll see about that. Just give it a rest. This isn't helping. Focus. This is a serious situation. You shouldn't be daydreaming. That attitude is exactly why I don't trust you to get close while you're holding a knife. If that's unacceptable to you, then try me. See what happens. She sure was quick to threaten you, wasn't she? Stop hesitating already, you know you can't trust her. Both of them are using the same argument, it's not making it any easier to pick a side. Slide it over. No, absolutely not. I am not letting you hand your only weapon over to the world-ending princess. Until you come up with any other idea, like, say, I don't know, doing your job and slaying her, you remain rigidly in place. You tried this last time. Do you want to know how it went for you? Oh, I remember. She killed us, which, by your estimation, ended the world, right? Oh, before he tried to take over your body. Exactly. If I were you, I wouldn't be too keen on repeating your mistake. Hell, we could even force your hand and do it ourselves. I'm not afraid of dying again. Are you? A little. I think you got your point across. Fine. You slide the blade across the floor. The princess maintains unsettling eye contact as she reaches down to pick it up. Thanks. She pulls up her hair, smiling slightly, as she raises the blade to her throat. What is she doing? She doesn't say another word as she cuts into her own neck. No! Her eyes stare forward, unblinking, as she soars through skin, veins, cartilage. At last she reaches bone, the blade grinding audibly against her vertebra as it continues to slice its way through her neck. I'll be damned. She's actually doing your job for you. Why would she do that? Huh. So that's her play. Killing herself? She isn't dead yet. Finally, you hear a snap. Her eye twitches. There's an uneasy silence. She remains motionless for a long moment, her twitching eye the only movement in the room, until at last it stops in an unsettling half-wink. Her head twists slowly to the side, flopping to her shoulder, and her neck opens. The remaining tissue is not enough to hold the weight of her severed head. It stretches and tears until finally, it falls to the floor, completely free. It bounces a few times before rolling to a stop at your feet. Oh no, oh no, oh no, what did we do? Can, can we put it back? Please tell me we can put it back. The princess's eyes stare up at you, dead. Congratulations, you saved the world. Are you sure she's not winking at us? Obviously not, she is thoroughly deceased. I hate this. Can we just get out of here now, please? Of course, the princess is slain and the world is saved. 
Whenever you're ready, you can proceed to your reward. We should take her with us, don't you think? What? No, you shouldn't do that. Why would you do that? I can think of lots of reasons. A trophy, proof of our victory. Hell, we could even give her a proper burial. She did save the world, right? You don't need proof, you don't need a trophy, and she doesn't deserve a burial. Just leave. Even after all that, you're still not satisfied, are you? Something is still motivating you to keep things the way you want them. I'm just eager to put this all behind us and give you your reward. Stop reading into things, the danger has passed. You can relax. I'm just keeping myself sharp. I'm not so eager to put my guard down. I am. I'm on team, let's put this all behind us, so can we leave already? Ugh, fine. You pick up the princess's severed head, its neck stump still oozing bodily fluids. Then make your way back upstairs to the first floor of the cabin. Did you see that? I could have sworn she moved. She didn't. She's dead. But what if she's not? Are you listening to yourself? Do I need to explain to you why decapitation is lethal? The door to your bountiful reward is right in front of you. All you have to do is open it. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only, a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is... Wait, no, that's not right. Well played. This... this is the end of the world, isn't it? I always thought I'd at least have time to explain myself before I had to watch it happen, but it's already... Over? Is he gone? But we're still here. Maybe it wasn't the end of the world after all. Maybe it was just the end of his. Thanks for carrying me up here. I had to take it on faith that you would know what to do. I'm glad I was right to trust you. So, this is the outside. Maybe it's just my lack of body, but it's colder than I expected. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? But it feels so bad, like looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. You're right. Part of me wants the truth, but something stronger is holding me back. Fear. What is that supposed to mean? Whatever awful thing I felt before, it feels so much worse now. No, that can't be right. There has to be something more. There's a world beyond the endless walls of the long quiet. We're supposed to be there. Do you know what we'll find out there? in me at the thought of people, fresh tears on a winter's day. They are not like us. They do not last. We are real. Nothing is an idea that dwells in the absence of something. But nothing cannot exist on its own. 
and because of that, nothing can't exist. If I did, I would already be awake. No, their thoughts are quiet. Do you think your narrator lives in the spaces beyond? Do not look to one who fears me for your truth. The only answers worth knowing are those we can find within ourselves. The next time I see you, each of us will finally know what we are. I will be here, waiting for you. You're, on, you're here to slay her. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie. We're not going to go through with this, right? Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost the blade. You take the blade from the... Daughter, her voice. Who's there? She said, Don't let it. F Don't be a stranger. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain. She's so focused on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? Then drop the knife. We should. It'll go a long way to building trust with her. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster, but killing someone in co- You ignore the trembling in your hands and tighten your grip on the blade. You poor thing. Your hands are shaking. Are you scared of me? Because you should be. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the- So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. Then I'm not talking to you. You stare at the princess, squinting. She squints back. The two of you are going to do this forever, aren't you? You squint even harder. So does she. At least nobody's dying right now. You're going to have to make a choice. You can't keep squinting forever. Eventually, someone is going to have to blink. The blade tumbles out of your trim. Thank you. Maybe now we can... Against your better judgment, we'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but... I so here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. Don't jump to any weird conclusions. We're two people who have met each other. By definition, we have a relationship. Don't just tell her that. That's cute. Do you believe that? Do you think I'm some sort of... <laughs> monster? If I'm supposed to be capable of ending the world, then how did I wind up here, chained to a wall? Have they told you why I'm allegedly so... dangerous?
Sooner or later, you'll understand that- How sweet. Now be a pal and help me get out of here, would you? We could figure out how to deal with them after I'm free. Doubt, unfortunately, clouds your thoughts as you attempt to run her through. A moment of distraction and hesitation is all she needed to sidestep your thrust, and it feels like you've been hit with a sledgehammer. Holy shit, that hurt! Though she's unarmed. The shock of that first struck your blade. We can still turn... Are you serious? It's a good idea. We've taken some bad hits, but we've dealt some too. She has to be fine. You make a mad dash to the basement stairs, the princess's chains rattling as she tries to chase you, but pulling taut much too soon for her to catch up. <laughs> Do you really think you can just walk out of here? She steps towards you, ignoring her chains. They creak and strain as she pulls against them until finally they break. She's free. Hurry. You push your broken body as she closes in and just barely manage to pass the threshold of the basement doorway before she catches up to you. You close the basement door, locking it behind you and quickly barricading it with the heavy wooden table that once held the blade. Okay, we can make this work. She has an awful wound and we have all the time in the world. Playing jailkeeper for a while might make things a little easier. You settle in against the far wall to watch the basement door. It isn't long before you start to drift off, your eyelids heavy with fatigue. But sleep doesn't come. Instead, your rest is broken by a piercing, wailing voice calling out to you from the other side of the door. I know you're still there. Why don't you make things easier on yourself and let me out? It's not like this little door I'll hold for very long anyways. Um, it's probably a good idea to try to get back on my good side. She sounds... Terrifying. Like she's less of a princess you saw and more like something out of a nightmare. As she violently rattles the door, you do your best to shut her out of your mind. When I get out of here, I'm going to pick you apart piece by piece. I won't forget what you did, and I'll never forgive it. You don't know the kind of enemy you've made tonight. It doesn't sound like she's getting any weaker. No, it doesn't. These aren't threats. These are promises. Sooner or later you're going to have to sleep. And I'll make sure you never see the light of day. You put the princess's threats out of your mind as best you can and huddle up against the wall. You jolt awake in the middle of the night to silence in the cabin. The ruckus has stopped and the door to the basement is ajar. It's lock broken and the table shoved out of the way. Where is she? Thanks for helping me get out of that awful basement. You try and stumble to your feet, but as the princess draws near, it's as though your, your body simply stops working. It isn't all at once. The paralysis comes in waves. First your toes go numb, and then your feet, and then your legs. You lie prone on the floor of the cabin, unable to do anything but witness her approach. Whose side are you on? Yours, of course. But I have a duty to uphold the truth. Lying about the facts of the situation doesn't change them. So helpless. I can take my time with you, can't I? She steps closer, one silent footfall at a time, cocking her head in curiosity as you feel your organs shutting down one by one. Or maybe I can't take my time with you. You don't look well. A little green around the gills. What a shame. If you'd only help me get out of here, we could have done such wonderful things together. Your lungs stop drawing in breath, and your heart freezes in your chest. You have seconds left. I'd say better luck next time, but we both know this is the end, don't we? It can't be. This can't actually be how everything ends. I'm sorry. 
but it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin, you're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Again? People don't die twice. You haven't even met the princess, and I hardly think she'd be capable of killing someone as skilled and courageous as yourself. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Shh. What if he hears us? That's a very good question, little voice. What if he does hear you? Shit. I think you'll find yourselves very hard-pressed to keep any secrets from me. Not that it matters right now, because like I said, this is the first time we've met. Still, I'd rather not get off on the wrong foot. We've a world to save, after all. You have already committed to my completion. You cannot go further astray. Those are two very different questions. Let's say you died l or we tried to slay. Well then, congr and your solution is to send us back in there. Do you want us to slay the princess? Or do you want the princess to slay us? Obviously, I want you to slay her. One of you poses a threat to the world, and the other doesn't. Anyways, I believe your other question was something along the line. What do you mean? Of course, there weren't any consequences. Speak for yourself. From my perspective, there were plenty of consequences. I'm never going to forget the way she just made us stop working. And that's only scratching the surface. If what you said is true, it begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or have you found yourself in a- Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? If she brought an end to everything- I want you to succeed. A warning before you go any further. She will lie. I don't think lying and cheating is her thing. She was very direct with us last time. Or at least, she was direct with us after we decided to lock her away. It doesn't matter. Don't. Trust. Anyone. The interior of the cabin is plain, the smooth wood of the walls almost featureless. The only furniture of note is a lone table, knocked on its side in the corner of the room. A pristine blade stands between you and the open, inviting basement doorway. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Hold on. What happened to the door? There was a door here last time. It's just an empty frame. She's already gotten out, hasn't she? And she's ready for us. She's been waiting. Can't you feel her eyes on us? I'm going to need all of you to pull yourselves together. The princess has not already gotten out. But if you keep getting stuck in your head like this, you're going to struggle to get the job done. So deep breath in, deep breath out. Your task awaits, and only you can do it. You're right. I was so stuck on the eyes watching us that I didn't even notice it there. What are you two talking about? There isn't a mirror. There's a table, the blade sitting on the floor, and the open doorway leading to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. We have to look at it. Unless that's what he wants us to do. And pretending it isn't there is a trick to get us to do exactly what he wants. If he's willing to lie about something as innocuous as a mirror, what else could he be hiding from us? Exactly. Everything he's saying is carefully crafted lies. I'm not lying to you, I promise. There isn't a mirror. Really. You walk up to the wall next to the empty basement door frame. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. Did he make it go away? 
Clearly there was something in there worth investigating if he wants it hidden so bad. You reach down and pick the blade up off the floor. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good. Is it the blade? Those are... Very different. He changed it, didn't he? It's like he's trying to make us doubt our reality. Calm down. Maybe the three of you just think everything is different because you haven't been here before. Enough of this past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. You cross over the- More eye. The air seeping- Her cr- I didn't think you'd come back. We're gonna have a lot of fun, you and I. Okay, we need a game plan. Last time we were here, just being close to her was enough to kill us. It can't be that hard, but then we'd lose our weapon. We'd have to make it count. Otherwise she'd be furious and we'd be defenseless. If a knife is even enough to do anything against something like her in the first place, it'll be enough. Finally, a voice of reason. The rest of you should take notes. You know why I'm being a pessimist. I'm just asking questions. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. As you emerge, you find yourself between two loose rows of white wooden planks, suspended in nothingness. A smattering of cobblestones, visible against the inky black of the basement. She could be anywhere, and there's nowhere for us to hide. We're completely exposed. Are you really not going to comment on how weird this place is? No, I'm not. We're going to die down here. I don't want to die again. Please stop saying that. You're only going to make things worse. Just pick a direction and start moving. I wouldn't give it too much thought if I were you. It doesn't really matter. Because either way you go, I'm going to find you. You turn to the right. A faintly outlined path lies before you. There you are. I told you I was going to Find you. The princess approaches. Your legs suddenly go numb. Your arms quickly follow. This is it, isn't it? You brought your little knife with you again. Cute. There has to be a way out of this. Think. Think. What did you do? Pull yourself together. She isn't supposed to be like this. I wonder how many times I'll get to play with you before you break. As your blood begins to coagulate. It's as if every part of your being is coming to a lurching halt. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves. Your lungs pull in a desperate gulp of air as your eyes shoot back open. What are you doing? I'm working. Do you want this body to function or do you want... And then experience stops once more as your body reapproaches death. Okay, whatever you were doing, please just start doing it again. Are you sure about that? Are you sure that's what you want? Or do you want to interrupt me some more? You have seconds left. Yes, I'm sure. Heart. Lungs. Liver. Nerves. Heart. Again, your eyes shoot open as you gasp for breath. Nerves. Can't decide you want to do, can you? Oh well, standing there gasping like a fish is more fun than dead. Even if you look ridiculous. No, she isn't attacking us. Why? The why doesn't matter. She's already proven her ill intent. Don't lose sight of your mission. Your weapon is still in your hands. Strike at her and end this before it's too late. Liver. Are you seeing 
Daenerys. Heart. You fling the blade into the void, denying yourself the opportunity to ever slay her and finish your mission. Nobody's happy here, but maybe it's for the best. You poor deluded thing. Do you think a single moment of bravery changes you into something you're not? I am what I am, and you're always going to be a coward. She raises a hand to her mask and pulls it down. You don't get the chance to see what lies beneath before it envelops you. Like a creeping mold, the complete reality of your existence threads its way through your mind. Birth, death, birth again, decay and bloom, a million stitches from a million microscopic wounds you've inflicted on everyone you've ever met with every muscle you've moved and every word you've ever spoken. No, 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 no. Let me out! Your existence hurts them. Let me out! A lonely soul in a room by itself, weeping. It lives for 80 years and then it's gone. And then it's there again. Let me out! A reprieve, a good life, love, children, a steady career, recognition from your peers. Here one moment, gone the next. The worms have found their orifices. Let me out! Diagnosis. It forgets everything it is. Anger, rage, distance, poverty. The lonely soul is lonely again. Love turns to mockery. It dies. It is reborn. Worse. Lonelier. Let. Me. Out! No, 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 no. No, no. What's, what's happening to us? Let me out! This is all too much. I can't keep going. You can't keep going? Well, what are you talking about? Oops. I think I broke you. I'll see you soon. You'll know what to do. You're on a path in the... Shit! Shit! What? What the hell was that? Who are we? What are we doing? There was a princess, I think. It's all so fuzzy. It hurts when I try to remember. You shouldn't know about the princess. At least, not until I... You've already been here, haven't you? I guess. It, it feels so long ago, almost like we've never left. We have to let her out. No, that's the opposite of what you're here to do. You have to slay her. Slay? We decided not to do that. Didn't we? Yeah, we're supposed to let her out. It's really the only way this works out for us. If you think about it, she's the one with power here. Nobody else can do much of anything. No, we were supposed to keep her trapped there forever. I think. We're supposed to be unfeeling. How many times do I have to tell you to snuff out your heart? We can't be unfeeling. Not when there's so much fear everywhere. There's nothing for us to do. We've already tried everything. We love her. So we have to set her free. Can we love something that hates us? Can we love something that hurts us? To be given an ounce of kindness from something so cruel would be more pure than any other love. Why are there so many of us? There aren't supposed to be so many of us. This is bad. You need to get a grip. What did you let happen? How many times have you been here? Many, 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 many times. It feels like we've been here forever. But it also feels like we've barely been here at all. It doesn't matter. Yes, we just have to do what she says and then everything will be fine. It won't. It will be for us. She said so. You're part of everything. 
If things aren't fine for everything, they won't be fine for you. There's no difference between fine and not fine, it just goes on and on. What does here even mean, if you really think about it? Shut up. You were here. Every single time. You did your best, really. There's just a pecking order. And our cruel and beautiful goddess sits atop it. Right where she's always belonged. You're lucky. What I would give to be able to forget. I've tried to keep them numb. But they're all too soft. A shame, really. I don't care how you feel. You have to slay her. You have to pull yourself together. You have to snap out of it. You're lucky you haven't been stuck here like the rest of them. There's no other way to keep going. You either need to forget or you need to stop feeling much of anything. They can't do either. He's not wrong. He's the only smart one left, if you ask me. He's worse than her. There's nothing worth making sense of. They're clearly all traumatized. And yet, you aren't. We break apart, and you stay the same. Yeah, what's your secret? Why can you break the rules when we can't? Of course we're wrong. She's the only thing that's right. Yes, obviously they're all wrong. What are you going to do about it? Don't think about that too hard. All it will do is weaken your resolve and make it that much harder for you to slay her. Maybe you're shattered in your own way. Are you your memories? Or are you the one perceiving the present moment? Ugh, here you go philosophizing again. It never goes anywhere. Yes, this is far from the first time you've asked us about consciousness. Who am I? What am I? What is I? Who even cares? They're good questions, great questions even, but they don't have any answers, and they all just end in quivering torment. It doesn't matter what we do, because we always find her, and if we don't find her, she always finds us. And then she smashes us into smaller pieces. If you all just stopped feeling, we could have been done with this ages ago. Your thoughts are far too scattered to rein back in. Your only option is to silence them. We've tried that. It doesn't work. Our hearts always brought us back to her. The deck is stacked. So many paths, and they're all circles. You slowly make your way through the umbral forest, bumping against unseen trees as you grasp through the darkness for a way forward. But eventually, you do make it to the cabin. Or rather, you make it to the place a cabin should have been. Instead, all you find is an empty hill. No, no, this isn't right. There's a cabin there. There's always supposed to be a cabin there. Don't ask him about the mirror. He always says he never sees it. He always lies. And he always makes it gone. Stay focused. You still have a job to do, and it's best not to be distracted by fraying thoughts. There is no mirror. You know that as well as I do. She's still here, buried deep inside the earth. Just walk up the hill. You always give too much space to the others. It's why you always lose. They've been heard too much. It's why they are the way they are. Exactly. They are delusions, and all that catering to them will do is drag you down to their level. You have to keep moving. Or you could just give up. You walk up the hill, hesitating just beyond the bounds of the cabin. The cabin that isn't there. You've got to clean the mirror, haven't you? You've got to see what's in it. Smash it to pieces. She's on the other 
other side. And we have to let her out. It's the only way we can be free. It's the only way we can have our thoughts back. Just go around it. Just do something. It doesn't matter what. Proceed. Proceed to where? I'm afraid you're going to have to be a little more specific. That's a new one. Do you think it'll work? Of course it'll work. He always makes the best decisions. It's why he gets to make them. And it already has worked. It's gone, don't you see? We're one step closer to her. The interior of the cabin is much the same as the exterior of the cabin. A dull, fuzzy, dreamlike nothing. It's empty and isolating, but there's just enough vague shape and unknown texture to suggest the structure therein. Wrong and unsettling as it may be, the only object of note is a pristine blade buried in the dirt floor, a hint of its shining edge teasing through the sediment. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you're going to do this right. Take it. It's the only way forward. over the hole and gaze into the abyss. It is so very deep, deep in the bowels of the earth. You see something staring back at you. It fills you with dread. It's her. Uh, she's watching us. She never stops watching us. You really are a coward. With every word she speaks, the princess in the pit blinks closer. I said that way back when. You know that. having some fun, and I guess I wanted to see if I could knock you. Watching for me forever? That was so brave. Get closer. But forever is so, so long. And time erodes everything. Except for me. I've already taken your will, and you're not getting it back. You extend your hand to hers. For all her past cruelties, the moment feels gentle, tender even. I can't believe you just made me say that. I hate you. The motion is difficult at first, as if something still resists your efforts. But then that resistance gives way, and it's over. going to do next. I didn't think I'd be so... tired. Why is it so cold? She's gone. Yeah. I can finally think again. Almost. That mirror's back. What does that mean for us? I'm sure it'll be whisked away, just like her. Maybe it won't be gone. Things are different now, aren't they? Doesn't seem like there's much else to do here. Finally, we can smash it. Oh, you stop with the smashing. What do we say, boys? One last vain attempt to look at ourselves. Yeah. I think I'd like that. Seems we've got a majority. All that's left is to give it a look. Something tells me that this is the end of the line. But 
I don't feel bad about it. I'm ready. It feels... Okay. The fears... Oh. I'm done fighting. My heart feels... Quiet. The game was always going to end. I'll be free of all of you. I'm ready for the truth. I'm ready to sleep. I'm just ready to be anywhere that isn't here. Boys, it's been an honor. I think you know what I am. No, I am not a part of you. But that's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? From one vantage point I must seem wholly foreign, but from another, well, all the versions of me that have existed have collectively heard your every thought and driven your every action. If that isn't being part of you, then what is? You were, and it was by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. But you'll be awake soon, and then it won't be able to work like that anymore. I do. The people out there are real. No matter what you do to them, no matter what you enable, I want you to remember that. Nobody alive has done anything to you. I'm all gone. But if you and the princess want to smite the rest of them for the crimes of a dead man, if you really want to be that petty, there isn't much I can do to stop you. I'm aware, and if I were you, I'd be more precious about your time. Because among other things, she is death itself. To rid the world of suffering, to save untold trillions from being lost forever to the cosmic wind, she must be destroyed. And despite how far you've fallen, you will still have a chance to fulfill your purpose once I'm gone. like you. I am an echo, likely one of many. Somebody made you, after all, and I'm what's left of him. Not that I'm the only one who can make that claim. I'm sure you've met many others like me. It doesn't hurt. I don't feel pain. Not physically. She is the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change. She is transformation, or most of it. Her nature is why I had to die, for she becomes that which others perceive her to be. But an echo can't perceive things, not in the way that people can. When I broke the cycle, I made sure that the tear was rough. You carry a part of what should be her, and she carries a part of what should be you. Things won't be as they are now, but they won't be nothing, either. Besides, anything is better than oblivion. In the end, 
Nobody wants to leave. I've said my piece, and my time is up. It's like I said, I'm just an echo. And echoes always fade away. You know what you have to do. this moment. I've missed you dearly. Every word you spoke found its way to me. I know him, and I know his construct. He was deluded by his fear of death. Pay him no mind. Ever the passive player, always reacting and never acting, but it's woven into your nature, isn't it? When the Echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice and me a role to play. I am not death, but I contain it in my multitudes. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or, will you open the final doors to our liberation? Of course I have a say in all of this. You and I share reflections of each other's burdens, just as you and I share reflections of each other's gifts. If we didn't, the winding paths that brought us here wouldn't have been full of strife and conflict. Nothing brings me greater joy than to hear those words. The final peace lies with you. Just like it always has been, and just like it always will be. 